This lesson deals with a MATLAB example. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 8 starting on page 50. As we saw in our last video, even very simple problems can have tedious calculations. So if you have a calculator that has some of these things built in, it can be a great time saver. In the course, we're going to use a software package to do some of this work. We're going to use MATLAB just like we did in ECE201. The examples in this course I'm going to do with the student version of MATLAB in case you want to purchase a copy for yourself. For those students that are here on the MSU campus, we have MATLAB full version on all the PCs in the College of Engineering. In ECE 201, we used a line editor to enter the data, and then we ran MATLAB pretty much like a calculator. Let's look at a little different technique here where we're going to actually write a file, save it, and then run that file. This allows you to set up some common examples and just simply change the entries. So you can double click on the MATLAB icon on your desktop, or somehow open the program, however you want to do that. You'll see a MATLAB command window. Under File, New, Click on the M file, and then the M file editor and the debugger will appear. In our last video, we did an example where we wrote a matrix by inspection, and then we manipulated the entries to simplify them. There's some chance that we may have made a mistake in doing that, so let's go back to the original matrix that we wrote from our nodal analysis by inspection and let MATLAB do all the algebra. Okay, so let's be back on page 48 of chapter eight, and we had a matrix that was our Y matrix that had two rows and two columns. And in our entries here, we'll describe this as the Y matrix with row one, column one is one comma one. And then the value we had was one tenth plus one over the quantity one plus J two. In MATLAB, we could write that as one slash 10, that's one over 10, plus one over the quantity one plus two J. I'm gonna put the two in front of the J for MATLAB. The MATLAB will accept J or I for the imaginary term, which is again, the square root of minus one. In row one, column two, we had an entry of minus one over one plus J2. I'll write that as minus one slash parentheses one plus two J. In row two, column one, we had minus five over quantity one plus J2. And then for row two, column two, we had five divided by one plus J2 plus one over five plus J over five. If you put a semicolon after each entry here, when you hit return, you won't echo back on the screen. We don't need to do that because we're going to save the file and then we can just take a look at it if we do any typing mistakes. And then we have a current vector i, which has in row one, column one, 10.6 plus j0. So I just put down 10.6. It assumes that the imaginary term is zero. And then in row two, column one, we just had zero. Just like we did before in ECE 201, we can now solve for the voltages here, which would be node voltages one and two. You can use this notation, V is equal to Y backslash I. This indicates to take the inverse of Y, and then you can find the entries for uh, node voltage one and two. The format it's gonna give you in the output is just gonna be in rectangular form, but maybe we wanna take a look at it in polar form because we wanna convert that back into the time domain. So let's have it do the work for us instead of us punching in the calculator. And so to have it take the magnitude, let's just define that then as the following, uh, ABS stands for the absolute value of the matrix V. So I'll take the entries in there and we'll find the, the value of the magnitude using this command. To find the angle, let's say angle, parentheses V, and then it's gonna be in radians per second. So let's multiply that by 180 divided by pi. It'll give us the answer in degrees. So once you finish typing this, let's save it. And let's close the editor debugger. Go back to our command window and then under file, click on run script and then you can select the file you just saved, and then you get the following output. So here's node voltage V1, real and imaginary, and the same for V2. And then we had it find the magnitude and angle, and we defined that with the material above, and it found the magnitude for V1 is 70.4329, and found the angle is minus 13.7995. Also found V2 for us, although we didn't solve for it, but this is the same result we had on page 50, a little bit more accuracy, a few more places here too. This would be a great time saver as we look at larger and larger problems. This is an example using MATLAB. 